Hey everybody, Aaron Zamzo from the Better Every Shift podcast. We got a special treat for you today. We are going to dig into our vault, our archives, and re-release one of our earlier podcast episodes. And this is one of our more popular ones uh, with uh, someone you might know. It's Jason Patton from Fire Department Chronicles. Now, the reason I really love this episode is that he talks about something that we've really hit on a lot of our episodes, um, in, and that is in order to grow, in order to really get better, you need to get uncomfortable, and you got to deal with some things that you may not be comfortable with, face them, uh, learn from them, and get better, and uh, that is one of the great messages that Jason shares. So please uh, take a listen, rate, review, comment, share. Thanks for supporting Better Every Shift. Hope you enjoy. This episode of the Better Every Shift podcast is brought to you by Lexipol, the experts in policy, training, wellness support, and grants assistance for first responders and government leaders. To learn more, visit lexipol.com. That's L-E-X-I-P-O-L.com. Now let's get into the show. Welcome, everybody, to the Better Every Shift podcast. My name is Aaron Zamzow. There is Janelle Fasquette. And um, hi, Janelle. Sorry. How are you today? Uh, good. Good. We are already <laughs> laughing and smiling because you could probably already see we have Jason Patton with us. Um, Hello. Hi, Jason. Thanks for being here, man. Thank you for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. We uh, we already used most of our best material behind the scenes, and Janelle is kind of angered that I always do this. We have great conversations, so we're going to try to bring it to you. Let me just introduce Jason real quick. If you don't know who he is, um, you've probably been under a rock because his stuff is everywhere. He is on my walls, as a matter of fact. We were just chuckling about that a little bit. He's a career firefighter paramedic for Riviera Beach. He uh, is has the creator of Fire Department Chronicles, which is a very popular series on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, he's also the vice president, got connected with Fire Department Coffee, which is a veteran-owned company run by firefighters. He uh, supports and, and serves as the voice for and an advocate for many, many groups that benefit firefighter charities and health and wellness. And we're going to call him the um, modern era fire service influencer, the first. Uh, you Man. Know, it, 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 You'll take that, right? Or I just oh, said, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, Aaron. We, Thanks, dude. <laughs> yes. Well, I told you, we've been smiling ever since you got on. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. Um, Thank you. It must be my birthday, right, Janelle? Because you you booked Jason for my birthday. Is it your birthday? It is my birthday. Happy birthday, yeah. buddy. Yeah, happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. It, this is a great gift. Yeah. When What's I? that? You want to take my clothes off? Is that is that? Like yes, it? yes, uh, that would be well, great. I mean, well, we'll do it at the end. We got to keep. It was the behind end. the scenes. We were talking. Yeah, about once that, I right? take my shirt off, no one's no one's watching this anymore. That's it. <laughs> well, you know, and we got into a lot of a great conversation. You know, just you know, you're still active. You're still you're you just got to do uh, like your first kind of should we say Hollywood type video, like actual production? That was it was the largest production that I've personally been on for a commercial shoot. Yeah, it was very cool. And it obviously benefited incredible things to the fire service as well. It did you ever think from where you started, I think you said you started Fire Department Chronicles in 2015. Mm -hmm. You know, why did you start that and did you ever think you'd be here? The answer is no. Uh, I, not in a million years would I have ever thought, and I would have got here. It, it started just, you know, I've said I've said a million times that I am I'm not special. I there's one of me in every fire department, every EMS station across the world. You know, someone that's cracking jokes or playing, you know, messing around with the other guys or video and something stupid, that kind of thing. So I just I got very lucky. I had the right chief at the right time with the right amount of patience. A lot, lot of patience uh, when it's <laughs> first. But, uh, but you know, it was just we were literally just mess around the station I, uh the the first video we did was making fun of the battalion chief we did like national geographics fire department edition and kind of like hunting for different positions and the one that we were first hunting for was the battalion chief we said the bigger their belly the more gnarly they are i don't know what your battalion <laughs> chiefs look like but that was ours at the time uh and he actually went along with it really well it was really fun and then then we did the firefighter but the one that kind of like p kind of moved me up a little bit more and kind of put me on the map slightly and at least in the ems world was we hunted for the uh paramedic via their natural mating call which is bitching 
And, uh, <laughs> it, dude. And, and every time someone's like, man, I can't believe you make fun of people. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm not making fun of people. I'm making fun of myself. Like that is me. I was the one bitching and moaning or doing whatever. It's, yeah. it's always, it's, it's literally about the people I work with, but a lot of times making fun of myself. So is the maniac one, is that you working out? Are you like, dude, that video was my battalion chief at the time made me put that bike together. It was a present for one of it for like his daughter. And he's like, Pat, go put this together. I'm like, it's nine o'clock at night. And he's like, and go put it together. I'm like, <laughs> nah. so I like put it together and I was like, we're making a video. And it started, that, that was the first video I ever got a million views on. It was, uh, it was, it was really funny. So, so was that like the breakout video? That yeah, was the, you know, the paramedic one was kind of that got me on the map with with yeah. EMS and firefighters and stuff. And then the for yeah the the bicycle I couldn't I couldn't recreate what what that did if I tried today with my exact followers. So I I couldn't tell you what happened there. It was a yeah. accident. And if anybody hasn't seen that yet, I you know I I'm kind of a fitness guy, and so <laughs> it's this. I don't even, it's like this old bike, recovery yeah. bike. It, it's uh -huh. like, and you're just going to town on this at different places <laughs> all over the firehouse <laughs> to the song. And no um, sense to it. Like, I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> right. I know everyone watching that was like, what is happening right now? Yeah. <laughs> but they were watching, they kept watching it. That's the <laughs> funny part about it, right? And and so that, I mean, that that propelled you. You had a couple of, uh, you obviously you've had hits and misses, right? Like as oh, you've yeah. done this, you know, oh, yeah. As you kept going with this, what was the what's what drives you? What what keep? How do you keep coming up with this stuff? I love it, man. I just I love making videos, dude. I think it's the I I, I there is just something to be able to find humor in the job that we have. I mean, the calls that we run all the time, the things that we see, like there is just and even just walking down the street and just human life, like you have to find humor in some way, shape, or form because. I mean, God, it just seems like the world's falling apart on a daily basis. So if you can find something to laugh at, man, you're going to have a, a much better life. Uh, yeah. So I just, I, I got to tell you, this, this, my entire, everything that I've ever created with these videos has just been about finding some humor in all the stuff that we see all the time. The, the, the most, the hardest I've ever laughed, like on a call uh, was, was uh, the lady that called me for uh, dry hands. Like we transported a lady to the hospital because she wanted lotion. And like we, we had a great time going to the hospital. She and I were laughing the whole. I'm like, you know, I'm bringing you to the hospital for a load. She's like, I know, I love it. I'm like, me too, man. This is awesome. <laughs> so like, we're like, it is what it is. It's, we can't turn people down, so might as well have a good time with it, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, and you're right. Uh, I I think the, you have a great attitude. You have to find yeah. laughter in that, or, or else you're gonna cry, or it's gonna get a lot, or you're gonna get salty, right? Like, yes, yes. That's the other. That's yeah. the other alternative to it. Mm -hmm. And I think What's there the is that What's... curve. There is that curve. You see it. There, there, yeah. And most people will say like, first, like to, you know, one to five years, you're super ready to go. Let's go. And then like five to ten, you start to get burnt because it's just a lot all the time. And then five to fifteen is kind of, or ten to fifteen is finding yourself. And then you're just holding on for the rest of your career at that point, hope that God you make it to retirement. So that's yeah, it's that way. What's the favorite? your favorite video that you recorded is oh, that man. like picking a favorite child yeah yeah every time i make a video or every time i move into a new genre of videos i find like a, my my new fun one uh when i first started doing the green screening videos i loved doing that i just loved picking apart those shows because they're they're a necessary evil within our business uh but also i love picking them apart but honestly uh i would say Hugh or the first Murphy's Law, that was probably one of my favorite ones that I that I made just because it was it was so relatable to everybody. You know, find it, you know, you got Q in there, that kind of thing. Uh, but recently I would say uh, it's the you know, real calls that I've ran because these these are just true stories that I've been on. Uh the one where the guy was pour or the uh person was pouring urine into their own eyes to get rid of their pink eye. I was like, This is just oh. you know, stuff that man, I love it. It's just so yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, uh, I had a guy come up to me at the airport yesterday or two days ago when I was in the airport. He goes, are people really, I think like, do you think people are dumb? I'm like, no, I just think that, I think that emergencies are different for people. Like so one person thinks it's an emergency, another person doesn't. And, you know, everyone deserves the appropriate treatment. So we'll bring them to the hospital. And I would love to say that I've never done something stupid in my lifetime that would have gotten me in those positions, but I would be a bold faced liar, like jumping off of a wall when I was 10 to try to, uh, jump over something and landed in thorn bushes and was completely covered in thorn, you know, just the normal kid stuff. Yeah. Again. There, these, there wasn't a cell phone around to, to video it back then. That's the I'm difference, right? Like, yeah. you know, now you'd find yourself on a show 
you know, yes. on MTV or something like that. It, it, and that's why we all find out about it, which yeah, is great because yeah. it provides material for you and I, you know, to laugh about and Janelle, right? Exactly. So, yeah. It, you know, and, and w- one thing though, I want to switch it. So you're having fun with this, but then you realized, Hey, I, uh, you know, there, there was that point you're like, I got a million views on this. Was there something that said in you or is it just who you are? You know, I can actually start to make an impact mm-hmm. more of a positive way than just laughter. Right. When did you all of a sudden start to get the, the philanthropic kind of bug? I've always been a person that just loved helping other people in general, uh, whether it is uh, through my job or just helping someone. I, you know, uh, every once in a while, like I'll go into a grocery store and I'll see uh, someone like going to pay and, and I'll look, it looks like they're like, tr- they're like kind of going through their cash, like, Oh crap. And I'll just pay their bill or whatever. I, I lady the other day, she came in and I, she had run out to get her wallet. She was trying to find a wallet. And I just paid for her food while she was gone. Like, I just, I think, I think that kind of stuff is what truly makes the world kind of move a little bit better. And, and people appreciate that because those are the moments in people's lives, whether it's $5 or $500, they remember that. That was the time when someone actually did something nice to them. And people have done extremely nice things for me as well. I've been in restaurants eating and people have paid for my food, you know, when I, when I was uh, in uniform. And I'm like, that's that's an incredible thing. So um, I think it all came together. It was a natural progression with the videos the I guys right probably uh, about eight months into making videos guys reaching out like man we had a really bad call we were kind of in a, in a, in a we were stuck in a, in a you know in a gray space or whatever and we couldn't really get out of it and then we watched the video just happened to be yours we laughed we were able to kind of pull ourselves out of that moment and then talk about what we needed to talk about with the bad call we were just on so some of it just goes hand in hand and it happens to work perfectly with each other but I truly love Man, I love helping people get help because I've needed it at some point in time. So it's, it's yeah. just it's nice to be able to kind of give that back, you know. Yeah. And I, it, and for those that, that, you know, think that any of this is an act, by the way, I saw you at, at a major conference and you, uh, you know, to your, I'll give you a ton of credit. You talk to everybody like you actually talked to me. We've met before. But I mean, you, you know, just watching you interact with people like you, you know, you had questions for them and, and there was like not enough time of the day for you. And and. I, you know, I appreciate that. Uh, and I think that's probably why that's probably why, why you're partially very successful and, and, you. you know, and, and thank you for that. And don't lose that number no, one, no. Number two, you know, uh, <laughs> no, it's I'm what drives you, you. Yeah, no. And I appreciate that dude. Cause I, I like to, I love, I do. I love talking to people, man. It's really fun. Cause you learn some of the most incredible stories when you talk to people, especially firefighters and EMS, like, FDIC is a whirlwind from the second I get there to the second I leave, but I genuinely want to sit there and talk to people because I love hearing what people have to say. And I tell you the most humbling thing I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, recently, the uh, Dennis Leary, uh, the Leary Firefighters Foundation yep. featured me. And that is like a, re- that's the one, those are moments where you're like, all right, let's see if people like me or not because yeah. you find out real fast. And it was like, I was blown away. People genuinely had great stuff. And I was like, that's just, that's cool, man. I'm glad I made a, a positive impact on people because it definitely could have went the opposite way. So I'm super happy. I think I saw your post. It's like, mom, I made it. Like- yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So, you know, when, so what do you- when you think about like the, you know, we kind of joked earlier about like being like the first fire service influencer, right? In this like modern era, but who influenced you? Like who pre- YouTube and things going viral, who were the names who really stuck out to you and had an impact on your career? You know, I, for firefighting, I'm, I'm first generation firefighter. I just had through happenstance, someone told me about EMT school, which down here, you got to be an EMT or a medic, at least to, to get hired as a firefighter. So I just walked into it. I loved that. I loved everything about it. I love learning about the human body and, and then the way fire works and, you know, just just this business in general was really cool. On the comedic side, you know, my brothers have just been so funny to me and I love both of them. They're uh, my my middle brother has uh, kind of a, a, a flary kind of um, uh, what do you call it? Like he's very matter of fact with his jokes. And uh, my youngest brother has one of the driest sense of humor I've ever met. But <laughs> let me tell you, this guy throws out a joke and it's in the most like odd moment, but it is perfect. And you die laughing every time. And I just, I just, I really loved it. But comedians, I've always, I've always appreciated like dry, fun, clean humor. I do love like really raunchy humor. That's if you ever meet me in person, you'll see I curse a lot. Uh, but uh, on videos, I never do it. But I love like cool, dry, um, 
like education, like almost like educated humor. It's like you got to take a second and think about it and be like, huh, all right, that was good. So yeah. like that, that was a, a Dane Cook. I know he, uh, he, not a lot of people love him, but I just, oh, I, I remember him. Cool. Yep. Cool stories, yeah. man. I thought it was so cool. Um, you know, uh, I, I love Kevin Hart. I always thought was, was hysterical for me. Um, Dennis Leary. I love D- Dennis Leary. Everything that he did, I thought was, was really cool. And then, um, I grew up, that's my dog freaking out about something. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, kind of Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. Like I loved Adam Sandler, like his standups and stuff. I thought it was good. Hold, uh, hold on. I know we're live, but let me go stop him. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Say yes. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's your, that's your uh, relief, right? Like that's, you know, you, you laugh probably. And, and, and I, had, I had watched some of your stuff and you, you know, part of this is, is our way of coping, right. With oh, yeah. what we see, you know? And so mm-hmm. comedy is a way that you cope. Um, giving back is a way we cope, right. Mm-hmm. Obviously a dog, you know, what, yeah. what, what else do you do to, to, you know, unwind and, and, to, and to cope. And, and now your job, your life's a lot stressful, more stressful because you have a business side of it. So, you know, how, how do you stay whole? Like, what do you do? Man, I, I got to tell you, one of the, the biggest lessons I had to learn in life is everything cannot be zero or a hundred. You have to find moderation. Like, even if it's 30 seconds of like, whatever it is, you know, just looking at your phone and enjoying something or putting your phone down, like taking five minutes for you wait, when you wake up in the morning, not grabbing your phone. I love working out. I would say that's my number one stress reliever. I just feel good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm more, I'm more happy throughout the day if I feel like I'm getting into a decent shape or obviously the stress relieving, even if it's 20 minutes, 20 minutes is actually my, my average workout these days. Cause that's, that's what my schedule allows. And I, mm-hmm. and I enjoy it and, and it's fun. Plus but, you're a maniac anyway. So you're just going right pretty much. Dude. It's 20. Yeah, I just, yeah. uh, 2000 calories in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but yeah, exercise, uh, trying to kind of unwind through watching movies or whatever it is. But a lot of it is for me, it's micro dosing of happiness throughout the day. And that's kind of what makes me happy. Some people need like full vacations where they can leave for a week. And I, I just, I've, I would love that maybe later in life, but right now my schedule or mindset just doesn't allow that. So if I get like 10 minutes to sit down and, and eat a burrito and just think about life and whatever, then that's what I'll do. So take a couple of deep breaths, take right? Couple. Just, yeah. You know, do, you got it, man. You, you gotta. Yeah. It, it, even in the firehouse, do you take time just to go, you know, be alone or how do you handle that when you're on shift? If I have to, yeah, I will. I got to tell you, man, naps. Dude, if you naps, man, I love naps, bro. And if you can take a nap, do it. It's like mm-hmm. it's uh, for some reason, it's just been so frowned upon. Sleep has been so frowned upon, and some people can function off of five hours of sleep. And if you can do that, let's go, man. Like all day, you you're awesome. I'm not that type of person. Like I need to rest. I, my brain needs some sleep. So uh, sometimes I'll lay down to a thirty minute speed nap, or I'll do an hour nap if I if I'm able to do it. And I and I love that, man. I'll get away from everybody and then back in it, but. You know, the unique thing about the firehouse, and I think most of us are like this, we got into the business to save lives, but we truly stay for like the brotherhood and sisterhood that you get. Oh, yeah. I've, I've like almost peed myself laughing, uh, sitting at the fire station, like hanging out around the table, finished eating dinner. We're telling story. I love glory stories, man. They're my favorite things in the world <laughs> just to hear people yeah. tell stories. It's so much fun. Yeah. And, and you talk about glory stories. It's, it's funny now because like you get that old that old chief. Well, you know that fire that was that was that was four mm-hmm. and a half days, and then in the corner you got some young kid being like, "Hey, chief, that that was like that was that was not like here's a picture of it. It's like a house fire. <laughs> like you guys had it out in two days, you know, two hours. Checking. You know, right? Yeah. There's there's fact checking, and and, and mm-hmm. you hear this all the time too. I bet like, well, don't don't ruin a good story with the truth. no i love it man i and but the best is you'll watch one guy tell a story there's a guy sitting next to him going that's (laughs) not 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 a single bit of that happened man actually i had a guy telling a story once what it's again like to watch this unfold was like i'll remember this for the rest of my life uh a guy telling this story (laughs) he was just on this call literally just left the call comes back and he's like we're we were breaking the walls down, taking this, and the battalion chief said, you can't do that. And I said, yes, I will. And like, <laughs> as he's saying that, she, she's walking through the back door behind him. 
And she's like, that didn't happen. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we're like, yeah. Yes, yes. So, tell yeah. us, tell us. Yeah. It's on now, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, th that's part of it. Like, that's part of your material, isn't it? Like, that's how you, like, you know, you have this, in, this, this knack to look around and go, oh, my God, that's, that's material. That's material, oh, right? Yeah. Like, then what do you oh. do once you see something? How do you develop it into the video? What's the next step for you? What I tend to try to do is because you can tell a story. What I, what I always try to do is make sure that people understand because we always have empathy, no matter what is going on in our brains and how we're remembering what's happening. We have empathy for people. So sometimes to tell a comedic story about something that was happening to someone can be difficult if it just comes out the way that it went. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yep. so like we, we I, I want to make sure that people always understand like what exactly was happening. So, um, you know, if I see something or we're on a really fun call and, and, and things are going on, then a lot of times I'll, you know, hopefully be able to remember exactly what happened. I kind of run it through a PC filter, make sure it doesn't, nothing bad's coming out. Um, then I'll come back, write a rough script of what the verbiage I want to use and then uh, film it. And then comes the fun editing piece of it. But yeah, I, I've always, I, I got a guy compliment me uh, about two weeks ago and I thought it was a really cool compliment. He uh, was asking me to write a, a movie for like a fun firefighter comedic movie. And he goes, you have a really good way of showing that um, sometimes people can do stupid things, but there's always empathy coming from the fire service and the EMS service. I was like, that's because it's the, that that's the way it really is. No matter yeah. how it comes across, we're always there. I personally have never seen like a firefighter or EMS personnel be like, what the F is wrong with you? Or they're like, okay, let's go. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. It happens, but I think there's, there's a lot of underlying things and we can get, you yeah. know, right? Like. Um, yeah. you mentioned too, like between five and 10, and do you see this too? That you can almost go one of two ways. You can either get to that salty, like I'm just going to do the bare minimum or, mm -hmm. you know, for you, you, you seem to go the opposite direction where you're just, you're like, Hey, I'm here to even give more. And here's a way, mm -hmm. like, what's the difference, man? How did, how did that come? Like we, we tried to touch on it, but like, there's gotta be something in, in you there or something that, you know, like, and what would you tell someone who's in that five or 10 years that's kind of on that cusp? What, what would you tell them? You know, I, I, I mean, I would be a, a full on liar if I said that I didn't have like a couple of years where I was like, what is happening, bro? Like, like I was, okay. you know, you, you just go to, you, you've lost uh, some drive for the job or maybe you're burnt out. I went through uh, just a rough like two to three years where I had some home life stuff going on that was really hard. And I was bringing that into work because anyone who says leave home at home and work at work, they don't actually understand how your brain works. And they're just saying stuff because they want to say it. Uh, but, you know, they, I, so I unfortunately I was kind of interlacing the two, which happens. But, um, you know. What I found was that I was at a really fast station for a long period of time and I got stuck with a really bad crew. So like it wasn't a good crew that I was running calls with. It was people that didn't like to be at the job. So, you know, that eventually starts to it'll meld into eventually. So I, a lot of times what I tell people is, you know, if you're getting into that five to 10 year period, because your first five years is you trying to really seat yourself in the fire service or EMS or whatever your department is. And then you're trying to like gain relationships with the brothers and sisters that you're working with. And then eventually you find the people that, that you kind of like work with well and reevaluate what's happening. Are you working with them well because they're good for you and they're, they're actually mm -hmm. encouraging you to train and they're encouraging you to be a good firefighter EMS personnel, or are you just now part of them and they're it's a toxic you know environment where you you now just complain as much as they do that kind of thing yeah. so you know yes the job will burn you out uh right now we are on a mandatory like spree like you're almost guaranteed to work an extra shift yeah. like 48 hours some of our captains are working 48 24s right now like that because oh, they're mandatory yeah. every single shift so you know, reevaluate what's going on, man. What can you do to change like uh, the jobs? You should you reinvest more? Should you go to more classes? Find the fun and the passion, the things that you actually enjoy. Should you, if you're on a company where you can do truck or engines, should you go to a truck company or should you go to an engine company? You know, that's I think kind of just like sometimes changing things, man. Instead of waking up at seven, wake up at seven fifteen. Maybe maybe it'll change up your day a little bit more. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Try, try something, make it more positive is, and try to find like, like you're saying, change your environment. If your environment's what's getting you down, down the toilet bowl, yeah. change your environment. Right. Um, yeah. And, and, and well, that's a cool part. Of, 
What's that? Oh, I'm I was going to say real quick, there's a distinction there between what you can control and what's outside of your control. And figuring out that balance is a huge part of it, I think, early on. Because if you can affect yourself, that's, yeah, you can make these little micro changes. But then recognizing, oh, man, there's something totally outside of me. I don't have control over that. And yeah. That's a bigger question. That's trickier because that means, are you going to change departments? Is it, you know, trying to get a promotion? There's so many other things. There's, it still comes back to some of your own control, but I, I think that's where a lot of anger can come in is when people haven't taken the time to recognize what's within their control and what's outside of their control. Yeah, and I tell you that, that is a very relieving thing when you can stop for a second and say, you know, this is completely out of my control. I, I I can't do anything about this. And that kind of hopefully gives yourself permission to kind of be like, well, I can't do that. Maybe I can reinvest in this a little bit more. And man, that mentally, that's huge. And the promotion thing is actually was really big for me. You have to be on the ambulance your, uh, your entire career at my fire department, unless you can promote and, and promote to the engine. Uh, and I love EMS. I, I make fun of it a lot because it's just easy to make fun of, but I love the calls. <laughs> yeah. you know? There's a lot of targets there. Yes. A lot of targets, man. A lot of targets. Uh, but, but it's, but I love it. Like it's fun. It's exciting. It's like you get your brain working. Like it's really, really cool. But when you're on that box and it's every single shift, you know, five after midnight, you're never sleeping, you know, and, and our engines run with our, our medics, our medic yep. units. So I'm still running all the calls with them, but it, it was just something different. I showed up to something different now. Now I, now I drove an engine to EMS calls, but I, you know, I got to pump fires and have fun. So it was just something different. sometimes changes in routines can, I mean, huge, huge changes in your brain. Yeah. It, it's, it's all about trying to elevate your passion, right? Trying to find a new passion yeah. or, or, or figure that out. Like it's okay to not have one, but yeah. Where, where when you start going down the toilet pole, bowl, you got to figure out how to get back out and, and find that direction. So, you know, with that in mind, though, what what's driving your passion right now? I mean, obviously, you have, uh, you know, Fire Department Coffee, you got mm. the Chronicles, but you also you, you work with a lot of great organizations. You know, yeah. what what fuels that and, and how do you decide who you want to work with? I've always been very, very selective of who I work with and, and not because. Because I'm better than anybody. That's definitely not it. It's just I understand that uh, I don't. If I vet too many things, then whatever I'm vetting doesn't mean anything. That's that's kind of what I've always looked at. So Detect Together was a huge uh, a huge thing for me. They approached me actually when I was up in uh, Massachusetts. I work with something called the Heroes Cup. It's a huge hockey tournament that comes together. So it's an absolute blast. And I got I got introduced to them up there. They told me what they were doing. I thought it was very cool. And the next time I talked to them, they're like, hey, we actually, we have a huge backing of, uh, you know, federal government. We also have, you know, like FEMA, stuff like that. And then we also have all these firefighting communities coming together. So I got a really cool opportunity to work with them. And it's real firefighter lingo, how to make sure you're not going to die of cancer like that. I mean, there's a, there's a sign behind you that says, check your poop. You know, I, I <laughs> yes. mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, yes, yeah. so right. There, there's one that says, uh, I think you hang it above your urinal. It says you're already touching your balls. You might as well make sure they're even like, I love that. That's so yes. perfect because <laughs> that's what firefighters got to hear, man. You know? Right. And, uh, and I just kind of matches your comedy style too. Exactly. I mean, right. Like, like that's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. No, no. And I think that's where people, I think that's where people in general, when it comes to serious information, they have, they've got, they've misconstrued the concept of comedy. Like, you can say something funny, but it still be like nice or still be appropriate for the time. I mean, I've created CPR videos that are full entertainment and it's all appropriate. You can play it anywhere. Every video I put up is PG-13. You can play it anywhere you want and, it, and no one's getting offended. I mean, unless they want to get offended, but uh, you know, it, you can do it, man. And that's what they did with Detect Together. And then, uh, you know, uh, Banyan Treatment Centers, I worked with them for a while. They're incredible. A bunch of different facilities across the United States. I work with these places because those things have affected me at some point. My dad died of cancer. I had mental health. I had some mental health issues at one point in time. And look, everything, just because you are somewhere at some point in time does not mean you're, you're going to remain there. You just change something and then you'll go past that. So it works. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get the old, well, this is easy for you to say, look at you. You're able to do all these different things. Now I, I do have a little background story on you. The first time you ever spoke 
what like you want to tell that story about how you've how far you've come and you've grown right but people just i think a lot of times they see they probably see you and you're like oh this comes natural to him uh no it does not uh nothing has come natural to me at all <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that's natural to me is i'm i'm bald i i have to <laughs> uh Actually, the first, I don't know which one you're talking about, but the first time I ever spoke in public was when I started teaching CPR. So yeah. you can yeah. guys, this, okay. Yeah. So yeah. first time I, I, uh, I, I, my buddy's like, Hey, cause when I first started fire service, we made $0. It was really bad. And I had to get a second job like most of us. And I go to teach CPR and it's my first class. I've watched four other or five other classes <laughs> and the other instructor that I'm teaching with leaps and says, go ahead and start the class. I'll, I'll come in in a few minutes. I was like, okay, cool. And I went up there and I spoke for a grand total of three minutes and I almost passed out. Like it was bad. I specifically remember like stuttering, like, uh, 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 so you push on their, you push on their chest. <laughs> I gotta go get the other instructor. And I called my mom, my mom, I called my mom and I said, mommy, no. uh, I said, ma, I don't think I can do this. There's just like, this is after like, I maybe I'm driving home. I'm like, ma, I don't think I can do this. Like, I don't know what to do. And she, she said the best advice to me ever. My mom's not a teacher. My mom is horrible at public speaking, or at least she said that. And she's like, just remember this. When you're speaking in front of people, as far as they know, you are the expert on that subject. Like you could say anything and they will believe a hundred percent of it. And I'm like, Oh my God, you're right. And that was it. And now I can, now I own a comedy CPR company and that's it, man. Do I still get nervous? hundred percent. But yeah. people do it's natural. But no, it does not. Nothing, nothing comes natural to me in any way, shape, or form. So. Well, thank God you got over that fear, because I think uh, there's quite a few of us laughing and, and enjoying your, uh, thank God, you, yeah. you know, <laughs> right? Like it's it's that's awesome. That's uh, a great you. story. I think it's something that we can all kind of uh, you know take take and put in our pockets. Say, all right, if this guy is able to do it, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, Gosh, yeah. yeah. So uh, we. Um, we do this thing called hot seat questions here. And I think this is a perfect time. And Janelle and I come up with these questions, you know, cause we, we do a little background and um, we don't, they're just random. This is what I want to know. And the quick answers. We're going to put you on the spot, put you on the hot seat. Okay. Janelle's got the first one. Cause she loves these questions. Cause she's like, Oh, this is, these are, this is what I want to know. So uh, you ready? Here we go. Yeah, I'm ready. You ready, Jason? Okay. Let's go. Okay. All right. When was the last time you were super frustrated with somebody and how'd you deal with it? Uh, yesterday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, uh, so my, my amazing wife filled out CPR cards for me and why I was gone. Loved it. She just, but she filled out the wrong CPR cards, which cost me $250. And I was very upset at the moment, very upset. And I, but I said, she tried. It is what it is. It's a cost doing business. I like being married. And then I <laughs> am ordered more cards. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah. A That's divorce a is much making more. and yeah. thought process there. Working through yeah. it. A divorce is much more. Um, yeah. Much more. Yeah. Divorce will cost more than $250. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And she legitimately was doing a great job. I, it was more my fault than hers. I should have told her which ones, but it is what it is. So. Can, can comic relief help in the relationship? Yes. Comic, comic, or any comedy relief in it, in anything can help. You just it's got to be appropriately timed, it's like you know, not like directly in the middle of an argument. That's how you get stabbed. That's uh, so. Good. So name a time where it was not planned and timed perfectly. Oh my god, uh, I can't even think. That's a hard one, man. That's <laughs> I can't even think about that. Uh, yeah, no, I can't. I can't think of one, man. You got, you got me here. I got him. I, I mean, I've him. used Stop. comedy in like situations where, but I I can't tell the jokes. <laughs> 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 yeah. You you've told I the wrong your, joke. Your wife occasionally being like, "Read the room," like not now, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, right? Oh no, many many times I've told a joke and been like. Shit, and like, yeah, it's just not good. Oh. And that's what, that's one of the things, like at the fire service, when you're in, if that was at the firehouse, it probably would have just been awesome. But then when oh. you get out in real life, 
you know, there's a lot of times things that we see funny, we say it. And Janelle and I have this conversation a lot. She's like, you know, that's a firehouse kind of humor thing. And I've, I've had to, one of the hard parts of the podcast is like, all right, we're in the firehouse kind of, but we're not. And yes. you're like, right. So you tell a joke and you look around, there's crickets. Cause you're like, oh shoot, I'm not in the firehouse. Anymore. <laughs> yeah. so, no, yeah. you gotta be. And that's uh, what I've always told people. People are like, Hey, uh, any advice for people that are getting into the social media game, that kind of stuff. I was like, you're not in the firehouse. That is the best piece of advice I'll ever give you. You're not in the firehouse and remember that because yeah. it's going to end badly. Yep. So I, I, I uh, just came up with that one right away on okay. the, for the hot seat. So I, I, I got a point for that. But my real question is, and I, next time I see you at one of these conferences, this is going to uh, fit in. So what's your walk-up song? Oh, my walk-up song. Oh, man. I... I love, uh, I don't know why this just came, came to my mind, but Pantera for some reason, but that's, that's, that's not my walk up song. But <laughs> I just about uh, if I'm like dancing, just like, if it's just a, like, let's have a good time. I, I, I love a little, uh, Harry Styles. That's probably, uh, that's my new thing these days. I love a little Harry Styles, but, um, yeah, I love, uh, I love, I don't know. Walk is actually the song that I'm thinking of right now for some reason. I can't tell you why. Man, you're getting me pretty good yeah. on this one. Aaron so, like, you you got a keynote at this next big conference. Like, what are you coming out to? What's yours? Let's see what yours is first. Well, I, I I'm kind of like you. I have a couple of them, uh, but like, you know, a little ACDC, like Thunderstruck, is usually like if I'm coming out to an audience, or whatever, I'm playing that 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 beginning, so the crowd's kind of boom boom. Yeah, you know, trying to get everybody a little little fired up. If it's a fire service thing, you know, uh -huh. if it's a church organization, it's totally different. But you know, for fire service. <laughs> Yeah. actually it's so me just because i want everyone to be laughing at some, or like so my atmosphere because i do uh, how to hug 101 it's just a fun kind of like let's talk about your feelings that kind of thing i probably do barbie girl just to like Perfect. throw everybody yeah. off like no one would know what is happening right now so i'd All probably right. do barbie girl just to do it and i hope if anyone is listening to this and they ever have me come keynote that's how they bring me out as tomorrow that's it that's it when i see you at the conference you're not gonna i'm not gonna say hi i'm just gonna play that like on my phone just hold it up okay? uh, then you know it's me you're like oh, i gotta go say let's hi. go <laughs> that's funny perfect, perfect. all right i want to know uh so obviously we talk a lot about humor and it, i want to know not what's your favorite comedy movie what's your favorite drama Ooh, movie drama mm. drama god have you ever told you how bad i am at like recalling things i like i don't know why i can tell you things i don't like uh, I, no. I suffer from <laughs> the same fiction <laughs> i actually like science fiction my for some reason my favorite movie of all time for a long time and it's I, uh m my favorite movie was boondock saints I just, I don't know why I just love Boondock Saints. I, was, I, I obviously love all the Marvel things. Um, a Fifth Element, I was a huge fan of. I couldn't tell you why. It's such a horrible movie, but I loved it. it was just so, <laughs> um, so uh, actually, like uh, The Departed was, it was definitely, definitely oh, like one of my go tos. I would watch it. Love that movie. Yeah, just a, just a really, really good movie. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio has created some of like the most incredible movies I've ever seen. So I, I definitely appreciate that. So let's just go with The Departed just because why not? You know? Yeah, that, I like it. How about, okay, I, so now now I got to get back into comedy though. What's your favorite comedy? Super Troopers was like, I don't know why. Yeah, I just, I love Super <laughs> Troopers. That is everything. Uh, like comedy wise, that just hits it on every cylinder for me. Uh, I think it's nice. awesome. It's just uh, so good. Yeah. Your, your group of guys that you work with kind of remind me of that. That was that broken lizard. Isn't that what they call uh -huh. those, those guys? Yeah. You know, like, do you have, a, what's your crew? What do you guys call your crew that, that you work with? You got to uh, just the, the idiots, just the, just the, yeah, yeah the crew of idiots. Cause yeah. uh, we actually, let's do like, it's myself Fenton. We just brought on a new guy, firefighter Lance or fireman Lance, whatever he calls himself. Um, and uh, then our crew from fire department, coffee is awesome we got uh natalie and, and randy they're in all the videos and they just they do they do such a good job we, we love them so it's fun you got to do an episode called fdi fire department idiots instead Ooh. of you know like yes. i can see shirts awesome. i can see shirts coming up you know uh I like it. yeah all i want is a shirt i don't want to take a cut <laughs> 
If we make an FBI come, shirt, I will send you one, I promise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just come back again and, and, and talk with us. So um, <laughs> yeah. you got any videos in the works you can give us a little sneak peek on? So we just, for like a serious one, we just filmed our uh, Fox commercial for um, for uh, the NHRA. It'll be on Fox. It's uh, We are the official coffee of the NHRA now. I got to film with a guy named Antron Brown. He's a super, super cool guy. And uh, so we filmed that. I was just in Texas filming that. And then I just filmed a video today. When the guy asked me in the airport, he said, so like every, like people just call you for BS reasons. I was like, yes, I have, I have, but I've also shown up to calls and looked at someone and they were like, I'm not going, I'm fine. And I'm like, oh my God, you need to go. And uh, I filmed <laughs> that one today and it was literally his okay. wife telling him he needed to go to the hospital. And he's like, nah, I don't need to go. And then we saw his foot and we were like, oh my God, yeah, yes, yeah. you need to go. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like a compound fracture in five places. It was, uh, I couldn't even make it to what really happened because it was so bad. I was like, we were all looking at this dude. There's five of us in the room. We're like, Jesus, why are you not in the hospital? And he's like, yeah, "Yeah, it's fine. It'll get better on its own. Like, no, no, that's not the way this works. Yeah. Yeah. Merely, merely a flesh wound. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just a flesh flesh wound. (laughs) And it's the, Right. The irony right now is everybody who's, you know, in the fire service are, that's listening, they're hopefully looking at each other. Or they're like thinking about that one call. Cause we've all had that, you know, like, you know, and usually it's like a 70, 80, 90 year old who just don't fuss over me, you know, uh-huh. but your ankle is over there, but, and you're <laughs> here, you need to go. Well, it, you know, it'll eventually reattach, you know, well, how yeah. did you get here? Well, I, I crawled here 14 days ago. Bro. Yeah. yeah and, this, right? and this guy, he was probably in his forties, maybe early fifties. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, he wasn't even, and it, and it wasn't like, th- this wasn't like, a, I don't want to go because I can't afford it. I don't want to go because, you know, whatever. He's just like, whatever, bro. It's fine. It'll get better. I'm like, no, your heel is missing. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> it's gone. This does not get better, man. He's like, all right, I'll go. I'm like, geez. So yeah. all types. All, all right. Types. Well, well, look, we'll look forward to that. And, you know, thanks for uh, being such a great sport and, and doing what you do. You know, the whole point of our podcast is just trying to make people better every shift. And, you know, you included some things about attitude and, and taking care of yourself mentally and physically. You know, anything else that you want to add in to, for those people that are maybe searching for ways and, and passion and motivation to be better? Anything you want to add? Try new things at all times. That's 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 the best thing I can ever tell people is if you feel yourself getting into a rut, try something new. Like the worst and nothing, nothing and this has been said a billion times, but nothing good that's coming into your life comes easily. A lot of times there's uncomfortableness. You need to push through something. If you're learning something new, there's going to be a huge learning curve and it sucks at first. But, you know, if you don't pass out in the room trying to teach CPR, you're probably going to get better. Just call your mommy uh, and and she'll (laughs) she'll make it all better for you. But yeah, listen, uh, the best thing I can ever tell people is don't try to wake up in the morning happy. Try to wake up in the morning content because no matter how the day goes, whether it's a good day or a bad day, when you wake up the next day, you'll be right back to center again. Try to be content and then flow with the rest of the time. Janelle, you got any more questions? What do you think? Great advice, oh, just, huh? Great advice. And I, I love that. I, I feel like we're always finding these patterns that keep coming up in the shows. One being be uncomfortable. It's okay to be uncomfortable mm-hmm. and take a nap. That's come up in like three different shows. Everybody loves snap. <laughs> yeah, right. I th- I think that's maybe what I'll do right after this. It's my birthday. Well, for say. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank thank you so much uh, for thank being you. on. And uh, you know, my my mouth is uh, sore from laughing and smiling. I know Janelle's is as well. Um, and for those of you listening, please uh, email us at better every shift at firerescue one com if you have questions, comments, feedback. Please rate and review the show. Most importantly, learn something, do something, share something to make you and those around you better every shift. Thanks for listening, everybody.